The Mini Cooper S has been one of my favorite hot hatches for many years. And with the Mini range getting an update in 2021, we now have a brand new range of Mini Coopers available in India. We take the top two offerings from the Mini range, the Cooper S and the Cooper S JCW edition, to see if the new Minis still maintain their driving appeal, but more importantly, to decide if the JCW edition of the Mini is special enough to warrant a recommendation over the already sublime Cooper S. If you look at it, the product lineup of Minis today is quite vast. You have three doors, you have a convertible, you have the five door version, you have a countryman, you get various engine options. But for me, the purest form of the Mini has always been this, a Cooper S in three door form. For years, it has defined the word hot hatch for me. They're exciting to drive, they're great fun, they look like a million bucks and trust me, nothing gets your attention like a Mini does, probably not even a multi crore Lamborghini or a Ferrari. So I'm going to take the 2021 Mini 3 door out today and see how it performs and question then is the changes made to the 2021 model of the Mini, has it taken away some of the driving appeal or does it still remain a driver's car of choice? Well, let's find out. You're watching the AutoX YouTube channel. You can also get your daily dose of all things automotive on our website, autox.com and follow us on social media. Don't forget to check out our monthly magazine and make sure to hit the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. The exterior of the 2021 Cooper S gets minor changes like a new grille paired with the trademark round headlights. At the same time, the Mini retains its trademark Union Jack taillights which are a great insight into the British brand's heritage. The most interesting change to the exterior design though is the piano black exterior package in which the window line, the door handles, mini logos, fuel cap and exhaust are now finished in high gloss black. The interior of the mini also remains a familiar place if you've been in an earlier mini. Uh, you get an 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen here. What's new is this 5 inch digital display which is the instrument cluster now. There's also this interesting ring of light around the display. Uh, this also changes color as you sort of change the temperature. You can also set it to reflect what RPM you're driving the car on. So these interesting touches, especially the toggle switches, which I absolutely love. They're unique in the car making world. They've been a mini identity and I think they suit the interior perfectly. So I would say that mini has retained the quirkiness, the lovability of the interior. It's still quintessentially mini, it feels great, it feels really high quality, but one thing it is not is practical. Uh, the rear seats are, well, they're better suited for luggage. To be very honest, this car suited for two large adults and that's about it. The boot also does not have much space. So long road trips in the mini, I'm, I'm not sure that's a good idea, but all of that does not take away from the fact that the prime appeal of the Mini is one, its style which is reflected in the exterior design and the interior design and its driving appeal which is most important for me in a Mini. So let's hit the road to find out whether the new Mini still retains the old driving appeal that we all love. You know, I was just thinking when I got into the Mini and I started driving it, I was just thinking when was the last time I actually drove a Mini and uh, surprisingly last time I can remember driving a Mini was about two years more than two years ago but that was at the Chennai track so on the road I don't think I've driven a Mini for over four years which is a long time so it was a, a great experience to get re-familiarized with one of my favorite cars in the world and the first thing that really strikes you yes you can see it's visually small it's diminutive it's compact but it really strikes you when you start driving it in traffic that this is a car that you can really weave through traffic. You know what they show you in the Italian job? Well, you can drive like that. The Mini really urges you to do that. And the size and the quick steering really makes that impact that you can really weave in and out through traffic in the gaps. Uh, you know, even, even going to very small gaps because the Mini's quick steering and fast responding engine give you the whole beans. The engine, of course, is the 2-litre turbocharged unit, 189 bhp. 
more surprisingly 280 Nm of torque which comes in from just 1350 RPM and is plateaued to over 4000 RPM. So you have a very wide torque band which comes in just over idle. So that's what really defines the Mini's performance. You press the throttle, the 7-speed dual clutch automatic response and the Mini takes off like they say, you know, it's an overused cliche like a go-kart but it, you know, this is the car that invented the term that it handles like a go-kart and it still does. The body shell is really stiff and that has a drawback, I'll come to that later. And that gives the car amazing amount of stability. You can really take high-speed corners. It absolutely corners flat. There's virtually no amount of body roll. And that, you know, combined with the quick steering really defines the Mini's driving appeal. Another interesting fact, you get three driving modes in the Mini Eco, Mid and Sport. And you know, usually on many cars, you get driving modes, you put it into sport, okay, the engine responds a little better, the steering gets a little heavier, the, uh, the gearbox shifts a little quicker. There's a marginal difference. In the Mini, when you move from mid to sport, it's like the character of the car changes. It's like, you know, Jekyll and Hyde. And suddenly, the car explodes, the engine starts responding very fast. The gearbox is in the optimum gear. The steering loads up and gives you a lot of communication. It becomes slightly heavy to drive in the sport mode or to park in the sport mode because the steering is too heavy. But otherwise, out on the road, sport makes you drive like a maniac. And you know, that's the only thing that I really had issues with the Mini, that you really can't drive a Mini like a gentleman driver. It eggs you on to push it further. And the more you push it, the more you enjoy driving the car. It's a car that responds very well to aggressive driving. and that. That's what I love about the Mini. Of course, the small size, the stiff chassis, the stiff suspension, all that body roll, you know, cutting out all that body roll is not easy. It, there is a compromise to be made. And that compromise is that, well, it's only suited for two adults and uh, small pieces of luggage, like I said earlier. But the biggest issue in India with the Mini is that it rides really stiffly. It, it's on 17-inch wheels, which are not too large, 20545 tyres. But even now, unless you're on marble smooth roads, it's stiff, it, it jiggles all over the time. And you know, it could be an issue uh, because if you're going to intend using the Mini long distance or as an everyday driver, it might wear you out because of just how stiff it is. And on our bad roads, it only amplifies the stiffness of the ride. So those are the two issues of the Mini that you have to be very careful about before you make a decision on buying a hot hatch like this. One, practicality is not its friend. Two, the stiff ride can wear you out. On the other hand, it's amazing to drive. Like I said, it looks like a million bucks. And it's an experience. It's an experience when you're driving it around, whether you're driving it in eco mode, whether you're being a hooligan in sport mode. And the amount of attention you get is something you have to get used to. Any mini you drive, any color you drive, people will look at you. And you can't blame them. It's a great looking car. Question now is, with this 189 BHP, the Mini Cooper S brings up 0 to 106.7 seconds. But the JCW that I'm driving next is even faster. Of course, comes at a price premium. Question is, can you use all that power in India? And does it justify that extra cost? Well, let's drive the JCW to find out. The exterior of the JCW edition makes every attempt possible to let you and everyone else around you know that you're driving the fanciest edition of the Cooper S available. This means that the exterior features many John Cooper Works badges, an aggressive front bumper with huge air intakes and an oversized rear spoiler. All of which does make the JCW look a lot more purposeful and stand out even in a crowd of regular minis. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that the Mini Cooper S in 3 door form is my favorite expression of the Mini range. It's got enough power, it's quick, it's great to drive. But then, Mini has another version of the 3 door which is superior to the Cooper S. Meet the JCW edition of the Mini Cooper S. JCW stands for John Cooper Works. There's rallying heritage there. In the 60s, Minis prepared by JCW won the Monte Carlo Rally. They were immensely successful and Mini is carrying on that lineage in these cars too. Over the Cooper S, this is, as I would put it simply, Mr. 20%. This has 20% more power, 20% more torque. It's faster, but it's also 20% more expensive. So, 
Is the JCW edition really worth the 20% extra that you would pay over a Cooper S? Let's find out. The interior of the JCW features minor changes over the Cooper S. You do get these immensely supportive sports seats which are actually fantastic. But overall, it's very similar to what you would get in a Cooper S. You can of course customize the interior with different finishes, different packs to suit your style to make it more personalized. But as far as the interior is concerned, the JCW feels quite similar to the Cooper S. While on the outside, the JCW is quite different to the Cooper S. But the main game is, how does it drive? Well, let's hit the road and find out. Now, if you look at it mechanically, the Mini Cooper S and the JCW are virtually the same. There are a few differences. First, of course, is the fact that it has about 40 more horsepower. 189 bhp in the Cooper S, this is about 228. Uh, another 40 Nm extra of torque, this has about 320 Nm of torque from 1450 RPM. So it's still at a very low uh, uh, spot where you get full torque and then there's a flat torque curve. So that really kicks up the performance. One big difference between the Cooper S uh, and the JCW of course are the gearboxes. Uh, remember the Cooper S comes with a 7-speed dual clutch gearbox whereas the JCW on the other hand has an 8-speed what BMW calls a Steptronic. And I think the 8-speed is slightly better because it shifts faster. It's a slightly more intuitive gearbox than the dual clutch in the Cooper S. Of course, the dual clutch is a pretty good gearbox, but this is just that small amount of improvement in shifts over the 7-speed. Now, coming back to the performance, you know, the Cooper S is going to satisfy virtually most drivers. Like I said, it, it does 0 to 106.7 seconds. And... With its 20% extra, the JCW does decrease the 0 to 100 time to just over 6 seconds, 6.1 seconds to be precise, which is really quick. You know, you have to understand this is a car which is about 3.8 meters long. It's a really small hatch with its low height and with its sharp looks. Nobody expects a Mini Cooper to go as fast as it does, especially in JCW form. And you know, when I drove the Cooper S, I thought, you know, this is all the performance I need. But when you actually shift down and shift to sport mode in the JCW, the performance you get, as you can hear now, is simply plain silly. This car goes to speeds, very high three-digit speeds like that. The in-gear acceleration, especially, you know, I told you about that flat torque curve, all that 320 Nm of torque being available, right from just above idle means that in the mid-range, if let's say you are cruising at 80 kilometers an hour, you're in third gear and you put your foot down, this thing will hit the national speed limit 120 without even realizing what's happening and it just continues to accelerate ferociously. Uh, again, like the Cooper S, uh, the whole character of the car changes when you shift driving modes from mid to sport. In sport, it's just a monster. The seats with their extra bolstering, the support also help a lot and the performance that the JCW offers is simply stupendous. I mean, no small car should have this kind of power, but man, it feels great to drive, you know, just throwing it around, it, it's simply fantastic because like I told you earlier, it's a stiff chassis, it's low, it's got stiff suspension, there's virtually no body roll, you can just throw it into corners, the steering is very direct and accurate. And the question I asked at the very outset was, is the JCW worth the 20% extra over the Cooper S? The Cooper S costs 38 lakhs extra room, the JCW is 45.5, so that's just under 8 lakh rupees. I would say yes. Uh, you see, because I, I'm going to give you a very simple reasoning for it. If you're going to be buying a Mini Cooper S, uh, certainly budget is not much of your problem and it's certainly your second or your third car. And the other biggest complaint, the two complaints I have with both the Cooper S and the JCW, they're not practical because they're really small and at best they can fit two adults with some luggage. So practicality is certainly not high on your uh, agenda and if you can live with a stiff ride. I mean, if you can live with a stiff ride and the lack of practicality of the Cooper S, the JCW offers you the same experience but with a lot more power, with a lot more fun to drive. And if you're going to go out and spend that kind of money, why not get the ultimate version? Let me put it this way, if it was my money, I would take the extra 8 lakh rupees, put them in, get the JCW 
and enjoy that suitable lovely exhaust enjoy the uh, relentless push of power and and it's just a beautiful experience to be driving this fast mini every day and despite the stiff ride i could certainly live with it